Good morning folks, how are you doing? Welcome back to Football Digest Daily. My name is Nyasha. Hope you're having a good Monday. Mine is good, great, sunny. I could, not, I could not ask for more. I mean, the last couple of Mondays I've been having have been super cold. So this one is a good one. So yesterday, of course, this weekend, we have had the Premier League kicking off. We have had some beautiful games. Uh, and yesterday was no exception. Yesterday we had two games, Leicester versus West Brom. I thought Leicester were going to wash away or to wave the floor with West Brom. They did exactly that, 3-0 win. Then we had Spurs versus Everton, a game that I thought was going to be a bit tight. It was, yes, tight because, yeah, well, it was only 1-0. But, I mean, that 1-0 is total representation of the better team on that pitch because it was Everton. They were by far the better team. Spurs were, I don't know, they just seemed like a different side. They just, Spurs yesterday seemed like a team that was playing game week 38, not game week 1. Game with Walikwame Choka, man, no creativity on that side. Just pushing the ball sideways or one kwa wings or a bigger cross or Kiope uh, Harikena Taipata. If not that, they're playing counter attacks. If not that, they're playing long balls. Typical Mourinho ball. I mean, they are just terrible. They were just terrible. And then Mourinho took out Dele Ali, one of the creative guys at, at Spurs, at halftime to bring in Sissoko to push him to the wings. Hi! <laughs> Drama, like. I, I, Mourinho Jana ali lose plot. Jana ali poteza plot. Na wakakula ele. And it's a very bad way for them to start off a very tight fixture. Uh, a very tight run of fixtures that they have. Because they played yesterday on Sunday. They are playing next on Thursday for their qualifiers for the Europa League. Because Wakondania qualifiers. They are playing in Bulgaria. Then they will come back and play again on Sunday. I think against who? Wana chiza nani on Sunday? Skubuki wana chiza nani on Sunday? Then they will play on Tuesday next week for the League Cup game. There's a League Cup game they're supposed to play. Then they're also supposed to play the second leg of that Europa League in your matches on Thursday, or next week on Thursday. Watches a game Billy in two in, in a week. I love to play a game week three on Sunday. Aye. Ah. Our Misha. Our what a fryer. Yo, what a fryer. So it's going to be crazy for them. And, and man, Everton yesterday was looking like a really good side. I mean, guys like James Rodriguez were calling the shots there. He was, I think, the most creative guy on the pitch. He created, I think, five chances. Um, guys like uh, Richarlison again proved why they are average. I mean, the dude had like two chances to clear, to convert na Kauza. The first one, especially, I got two back to Calvert Lewin. Calvert was so free that like he had a whole goddamn field alone. He was alone in the whole goddamn field, you know, like in the box. He had so much chance, so much space. All Richarlison had to do was just cut back, a tap in. Uh, Richarlison Ninani, pura yo kitu ju, and just like that they did not uh, score the first goal, and he 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 wasted like I would say two chances. So definitely Everton would get from more goals if they had a more clinical striker. Um, Hames was good, uh, Adan was good, he was great at the middle of the park. Hey, we were complete. Aksha sit. Good luck getting past that dude because he's he's quite good and industrious. So Everton are looking like a side that's gonna trouble a lot of teams, and that's for sure. And they showed that yesterday. Um, now, of course, yesterday we had League One game, the El Clasico, El Clasico, yeah, Ligun, in a Kongani PSG versus Marcel. Yeah, that's their El Clasico. And they were playing yesterday, and it's always a fiery game, and yesterday was no exception. Actually, yesterday I was a heck of a brawl, yeah? And it ended up with five guys being red carded, one of them being Neymar. Three red cards, red cards to PSG, two red cards to Olympic de Marcel, and everything just. Helter Skelter, but Neymar was saying that he was uh, uh, racially abused. Uh, it has not yet been proven so, but he was saying so. Uh, that's why he was so incensed and he was, that's why he was so angry and that's why he got a red card for his reaction. So, crazy game. Speaking of PSG, now Mbappe has told PSG that he's going to be leaving next season. Yeah, this, this is the last season he's having at PSG. And <laughs> there's some. There was a, a, an article that was written and it made the mistake of putting Chelsea in there. And trust you me, the, the clickbait with that worked 100%. Because so many Chelsea fans, actually there's a Chelsea fan in our WhatsApp group who's, who's almost convinced that they're actually going to go for Mbappe. Bruh, unajijua, let me tell you. Mbappe is not going to come to Chelsea. The only reason Chelsea was put in the same sentence or in the same story to do with Mbappe is because they spent a lot of money this season. So even the article writer was like, if Chelsea going by the way, going by what they did this season, maybe they might be willing to look at Mbappe because they're spending a lot of money. Not like Mbappe is interested to coming or in, interested in coming to Chelsea. He is not. He has not expressed that desire. Um, Abramovich has not said he's going to be going for Mbappe. 
you know, it's just the guy who was writing the article was like, was so crafty enough to put in Chelsea Apple. Do you only clickbait proper? And I do to Chelsea what I end up on Dandy. Click, 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 click. The more you click, the more, um, uh, the more clicks he gets, the more leverage he gets. You know, in terms of, uh, uh, suppliers and marketers and guys who want to advertise on his website. So it was a clickbait if you ask me. There's no Mbappe is going to come to Chelsea. I mean, Chelsea, he's talking of leaving PSG this season. So 2021-2022 is going to be playing in a different season, in a different league, right? So Chelsea, you just signed Timo Werner, you just signed Hakim Ziyech, you just signed Kai Havertz, you just signed Pulisic, they're all there. You want to tell me you shall add Mbappe on top of that? I mean, to see Danganyane, let's be real, all right? So... Chelsea fans are going crazy. Some there's a Chelsea fan who's going crazy that they're gonna be sending Mbappe next season. I'm just here to tell you, bruh. Don't expect that stuff. Don't expect that stuff. It's it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Chelsea is a club that has a 17-year history. We are in 2020. Minus 17. Utaona Chelsea club is real Anzalini. You think Mbappe is gonna to come to the Premier League to play for a club that has a 17-year-old history? You think he's going to come to play in such a club? He's not going to come to play for such a club. If Mbappe is not going to Real Madrid, I don't know where he's going to. If he's not going to Real Madrid slash Barcelona, Premier League at us Juni Nani. Okay, Chelsea have the money to buy him. Maybe they do have the money, that's for sure. But, atakuja kucheza wapi. So, atakuja mweke ya Timo Vanna bench, ama? What, what is going to happen? Atakuja Hakim Zia kakai bench, ama? Let's be realistic. Kidogo to Kidogo. Uh, so there's no chance. There's no chance Mbappe coming to Chelsea. But that is one to keep an eye on. That is one to keep an eye on. He has expressed his interest to leave PSG after this season. So that's gonna happen. He's gonna leave. Where he's gonna go to? The story for another day. Uh, so let's look at the transfers right now, because of course the transfer window is still open. It's now actually exactly like a month till it's closed. All right, so it's three weeks to closure of transacting business with clubs outside the Premier League, uh, outside England. But within England, clubs can still do business. And uh, that business is going to, the transfer window, with that respect, is going to be closed on October 16th, if I'm not wrong. So three weeks to transact with clubs outside uh, and a week to transact with, uh, four weeks to transact with clubs inside. Speaking of transacting with clubs inside the Premier League, there's a deal that is kind of brewing. Um, some rumors going around that Chelsea might be going for Declan Rice. I don't see why West Ham would be willing to sell Declan Rice. West Ham right now are in a terrible position. They're in a terrible position right now. They just had one of their worst performances uh, since the Premier League began uh, or in a long time. Well, they have been having poor performances, to be honest. But they kicked off the Premier League with a nail against Newcastle at home. Can you imagine adding on top of that by selling Declan Rice, one of the most promising players? I West Ham fans want to change how much Amavi buy sana. So I don't think that's going to be happening. So only time will tell on this one whether Declan Rice is going to be going to Chelsea. Uh, seems like Chelsea are interested in him. But then again, they're just rumours. Chelsea last week, I think on Friday, they completed the signing of Edward Mendy from uh, Rennes, from uh, League One, a heck of a goalkeeper. Uh, but you know, appear some clips the goalkeeper who can play blunders in Guinea. Mm, maybe kind of doubt what Chelsea are getting themselves into, but well, he's been looked at by guys like Peter Cech, so maybe they have uh, he ha he has the stamp of approval from such guys. Chelsea are definitely going to get him, and they have actually gotten him. It's just a matter of time before they unleash him. Um, Martinez has been confirmed over the weekend that he's going to be going to Aston Villa for twenty million pounds from Arsenal. Of course, the dude wants a lot of game time, which Arsenal is not most probably is not going to get it. Um, so it's good for him to get all the game time that he wants so that he can break into the Argentina uh, number one squad, uh, being the top goalkeeper. So wish him all the best. The 20 million will be very welcome for Arsenal because we're going to use that to fund for transfers for likes of Thomas Party and Awa. And it has reached a point where it's starting to seem like it might come down to one of those two. You know, and for me, it was, if it was to come down to one of those two, I would definitely choose Thomas. I would not even think twice about that one. Um, Awar is a good guy, he's very talented, he's young. But I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm looking at Ceballos. Awar is just a more clinical Ceballos. If you give Ceballos time, game time this season, which he's going to get, he will be like Awar the way he is. You know, so creatively he is good, right? And so is Ceballos. Ceballos doesn't score much. That is maybe what we can ask him to do this season. But, I mean, the two guys don't offer much in terms of this. 
they, they don't offer, they, there's no much difference between the two guys, you know. But Thomas Wasi coming to Arsenal is going to be adding some different dimension to Arsenal. And like Awa, you know, because attacking wise, we have Danny Ceballos. He can create, that's for sure. He's industrious, his work rate, his work rate is crazy. That is also an aspect that a trait that you can give Awa. We have creatively, we also have uh, William, you know, he's still there, you know. We have Bukayo Saka, he's still there, a guy who can create. But in terms of physicality, a guy who can offer physicality, solidity, box to box uh, kind of play while still being physical, Thomas Party is that, and Awa cannot offer that. And that is a trait that we are missing. In terms of physicality in the middle of the park, we need Hueka Ugali Pale. That is exactly why you need to go for St. Thomas. And that's why I'm hoping he's, the, he's going to be the one you're going to get. I, I would rather we get Thomas than Awa, if you ask me. Um, so that's just about that. Of course, there's also the deal of Torreya being sold. That's maybe going to happen this week. He might go to either Fiorentina or Torino. We are waiting to see. And uh, yeah, so of course, a couple of transfers going to be happening in the next coming weeks. Much has happened. Are we still waiting to see if Jadon Sancho is going to be coming to Manchester United? Ama Ataka to Borussia. That is something we're going to have to wait and see. But you know, the next three weeks are going to be interesting. That's for sure. We are getting now to the home stretch of the transfer window. So. Happen sasa ina kuanga ni helter skelter, helter skelter, helter skelter, and I might go all the way to the last day for some transfers. I hope I'm talking about Apple and Thomas. I would rather we get Thomas first, then to an hour had the transfer deadline day. Iyo ni kosawa. Then get a hour, then go with Thomas till deadline day. Ah ah, nita pata stress. Nita pata stress. I am not ready for that. All right. So that's all for now, folks. Of course, that fun comes. I'll be sharing them. Uh, uh, let me see. What time will I share this stuff? Mm-hmm. Either Sai I'm a Sasita. Alright? Ten o'clock or eleven or, or noon so that I can know what to do with this football digest daily and nothing as a sai. Alright? That's all for now, folks. Let's wait up for today's games. Brighton versus Chelsea is gonna be a cracker. I'm looking forward to seeing what Chelsea are going to do there. Uh with all their money bags. And then we have Sheffield versus Wolves at eight o'clock, another interesting game. So quite a lot to look forward to. Have a fantastic day. Take care and God bless.